What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now I'm doing some Wayne's cutting, Wayne's coating, I'm never sure how you really pronounce that, but I'm making my own. I'm starting uh, to convert my sitting room into a kind of a whiskey room team. So I said I'd share it with you guys. So let's jump in and do it. Okay, so like I said, we're going to do some Wayne's coating. Now, originally I hadn't intended on making this video because I'm doing up the sitting room in my house and I'm trying to get it done as quickly as I possibly can. And when you film something, it makes it 10 times longer. So I was just sharing snippets of it on Instagram and a bunch of you guys messaged me on Instagram. I'll link my Instagram below if you haven't followed me there already. He said you were very, very interested. You'd love to see what I'm doing because I'm making my own Wayne's coating. So I said, okay, I'm going to do a video. This is not going to be a super in-depth video because there's really not much to this. So I'm going to keep it as short and as sweet as I possibly can. Like I say, I'm doing a whiskey themed sitting room in my house. So I have a whiskey channel. If you guys haven't heard that already, I'll link that below as well. Make sure come over and follow me there. Join in the whiskey shed. It's a bit of laughing, a bit of crack and I'm reviewing some whiskey. So that kind of gave the inspiration to do a whiskey themed sitting room. My wife really loved the idea as well that kind of whiskey room style, cigar room kind of style. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do our own Wayne's coating. Now I priced a couple of Wayne's coating kits and the kits are made mostly what you buy online. They are made from this moisture resistant MDF. And just to do one of the larger walls in the sitting room was going to cost 500 euros for two packs. It were 250 euros a pack. And I said, I can make my own for far less than that. So two sheets of this costs 50 euros. It's half inch uh, moisture resistant MDF. I'll go through it now in a minute, I'll show you this. That costs 50 euros, 25 euros a sheet, and that has done most of the walls in my sitting room. So one more sheet is all it's gonna to take to finish off the job. I have most of it done, so I'll show you guys what I've left to do, how to do it, how to make your own. It's very, very easy, very simple, and it's extremely cost effective, and it really isn't much work at all. So that's what this video is about. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. There's gonna be plenty of whiskey room related projects coming up. So I'm gonna make a live edge light fitting, a couple of nice lamps to go in the room. I wanna make a new computer desk out of a live edge slab and my oak table that I've already built. If you've not seen that, make sure and check that out, the oak resin table, that's in the room and it's, it's gonna be plenty of projects coming up. So I've talked enough, let's jump in. So this is what we're gonna be using. Like I said, it's half inch uh, moisture resistant MDF. And this is what all the kits that they sell online is made out of. And it takes no time at all to make your own. You can make this look like anything you want to make it look like. All you need really is a router, possibly a track saw. This track saw makes it so much easier to break this stuff down. It literally takes minutes to cut this out. You can even make this stuff look like the tongue and groove slats on the wall just by running a straight line with a V cutter on your router and you can like i say you can make this stuff look like slats and it's nice and easy to paint you can just stick it to the wall a couple of brad nails and some adhesive and it's very very quick very very cost effective and like i say this is what they make the kits out of anyway that the kits that you'll buy online it is just this moisture resistant mdf and uh, like i say you will cut this and break it down far cheaper than what you'll buy it for so i'm doing the square grid pattern style so it's the modern wayne's cutting style and then keeping nice straight clean edges. I'm not routing anything. You can if you want. I'll take you inside and show you what I've done now in a minute. But I'm gonna break down these sheets. So I'm gonna be using my track saw. This is my Bosch track saw that I got. It's a fantastic tool. It's a fantastic bit of kit and it's a really good investment. It makes breaking down sheets so much easier. It literally takes minutes and you're not lifting and carrying sheets around. It's far quicker and far easier than doing it on a table saw. That's why I like it. You don't have to go with the Bosch one. If your budget doesn't stretch that far, there's some nice and um, cheaper versions on the market. And for doing this kind of work, it's essential. So I'm doing a 100 mil uh, grid on the wall. The width of my pieces are 100 mil or just four inches. So I'm breaking down the sheet. So when you're breaking down the sheet and you want to divide it up into your various sections, just remember to allow for the curve for your blade. So the width of that blade, every time you cut, you're taking that much material out of the board as you go along. So allow a little bit of waste on the end they will count for all your uh, curve cuts or the curve of your blade the whole way along. So without further ado, I'm cutting four inch or 100 mil uh, strips of this. I have a bunch of them to cut, so let's just get on and do it. Okay, so I'm set up to make the cut there now. It really is takes seconds to set up a track saw. Just measure both ends. It's a perfect straight line and you're good to go. Now, using a track saw, a little bit of advice I give you, keep your cords out of your way because they're a real pain. They can get caught on the track and pull the track offline. So I've just an extension lead set up here and it keeps the cord off the track. And then just watch your airline or your, 
your hose for your vacuum. Again, that can pull the track. But other than that, you're pretty much good to go. Now, working with MDF, always wear a respirator, always have a dust mask on because you do not want to be breathing this stuff in. It is not good for your lungs whatsoever. And uh, I'll have the air filter running behind me as well as I'm doing this, and I'll have it hooked up to a vacuum. So either do this outside with a respirator on you, or make sure you have a good vacuum and a good dust mask, and you're ready to go. So let's get on and break this sheet down. There's not much to this. There we go, one sheet broken down, took about 15 minutes. So we have our 100 mil or four inch sections. Now all I have to do is just cut these to size and stick them to our wall. So let's go in, have a look at the wall. I'll show you exactly what it is that I'm doing. Okay, so here we are in the sitting room and you can see exactly what I'm trying to achieve here now. So it is that kind of square, modern wainscoting grid pattern and again it's nice and simple just a glue and screw this thing to the wall you just a couple of decisions to make whether you keep the skirting whether you keep the architrave i decided to build off my skirting so i kept the transition from the wainscoting to the skirt and i quite look like how that looked but again that's a subjective thing it's completely up to you um only thing i'd say to you is this house is over 100 years old so 19 the turn 1900s around then it was built so it's about 120 years old so nothing is square nothing is plumb nothing is true so you kind of have to pick um, your spot and work with it. So I put in the bottom board first, made sure that was level. Then I put in the top board, make sure that is level. And that gives you something to work with to the whole way up. Now, you're just gonna to have to accept the fact that you're gonna have gaps and that you're gonna to have to fudge it here and there. Trying to put a perfectly square grid pattern into a house that's uh, pretty crooked is kind of impossible. So we're gonna have some workarounds to do. So I have some gaps that I have to fill top and bottom, some gaps in the corners because there's bellies and waves in the walls and again, a perfectly square grid pattern is going to show that all up so we have to try and hide that as best we can but it's nice and simple again the kit just to do this wall alone for this square grid was nearly 500 euros this cost me 50 quid and it's done most of the whole entire room so i have this portion over here to finish and uh, let's do that now i'll show you exactly how to stick this to the wall it's very simple okay so this is a piece that i have to finish so i'll show you this now you can see the gap that i have here it's nearly 30 mil so it's over an inch so by keeping the top board level the whole way around the room obviously there's a major discrepancy so by the time i got around to here it's actually 30 millimeters or just that's probably about an inch and a quarter in the difference between here and over there so i'm going to have to hide that either with a coving or i'm going to have to put a fill piece in there because if i put a coving on it you will see this straight line and the straight line of the coving and that will catch your eye the whole way around so maybe the best option would be to put a fill piece in here fill it sand it and uh, just have this one look slightly thicker and then you will see this line runs the whole way around the room in a perfectly level fashion so i think that's going to be the best option but uh, yeah this is where all the editing happens so this is kind of my office space here which i'm kind of fixing up you can see the whiskey rack there and uh, this is going to be like I say, the whiskey room so let me get these measured up we'll get them cut and we'll get them on the wall Make a couple of cuts. Putting it up on the wall then couldn't be easier. Just get yourself a good quality adhesive. The adhesive is going to do most of the work. And then I have some 18 gauge brad nails just to shoot into the wall, just to hold it. These are 20 millimeters. So they go in about, you know, about eight mil past the sheet. Again, it's only to grab the wall while the adhesive does its job, stop the piece sliding. So very, very easy. So let's get this on.
Obviously, I can't go by the walls because none of my walls are level. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. All right, just shoot a couple of nails in it to hold it, and it should be good. Pretty simple. Right, there we go, it is literally that simple. And like I say, I'm keeping the nice straight edges on mine. When this is all done, if you had a palm uh, router, you could just run that router around all your squares and put whatever style grid you want. So you could have a, like a chamfered edge, a round over edge, or a detailed edge, just depends on the router bit. You could do that if you wanted. I'm keeping a nice clean edge. Everything will be filled and uh, sanded. So all the little uh, brad nail points, fill each one of them, sand them, and prepare all the things. I have gaps. I have to fill between my walls, obviously I have perfectly straight edges and my walls aren't perfectly straight again, they're 100 years old, so <laughs> you wouldn't expect them to be straight. So you have to just deal with some things like that. So we want to cut the cross pieces now, we'll get them in and that's this section already done. And one quick tip for any DIY new guys out there, always release the pressure on your caulking gun or your silicone gun, whatever you want to call it, because that will continue to squeeze adhesive out if you don't release the pressure. So when you're finished squeezing, Always hit that, release the pressure, or you come back, you'll have adhesive all over your floor. And you certainly do not want that. Hey, let's get our lines in for our pieces. Just wanna make sure we get this nice and level. Let's get it leveled across. Looks good. Happy days. Okay, so there we go, that's this corner finished and it is that quick and easy. So just glue with some adhesive and then tack it just to hold it in place. And like I say, if you don't have access to a brad nailer, some tacks and a hammer will do the same job. Just tack them in place until the adhesive sets, then you can pull the tacks or drive them home. No problem whatsoever. So it's nice and easy to make your own uh, Wayne's cutting. You can do any style you want, like I say. The more complicated, the bit more work you have to put into it. Just get at it with the router and you can do any style you want. I'm keeping it nice and straight, nice and simple, nice clean lines. That's the style that we're going for here. So I'm not going to continue it around this side of the wall because this is where my computer desk is going to go. And I'm going to build in some nice uh, shelving and a whiskey area here. That's going to be an upcoming project. So there's going to be multiple projects now for this room. I'm going to get a whiskey barrel, build a barrel from that. I have a light fitting to make from an oak slab. So that's going to be another upcoming project. There's a couple of lamps to build. I have a floor to put down and I have a bunch of uh, Wayne's coating to finish around here. So I'm gonna get on with the rest of the Wayne's coating. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it for now. Right, actually, before we finish it up, I just wanted to show you this wall. So I went ahead, did this. It was quite tricky. I had to make a few compromises here and there. It's all you can do in an old house like this when nothing is the same. So this door height and this door height aren't the same. This door and the window aren't the same height. I have angles to contend with there. So I broke it up as best I could. I think it actually looks quite nice. Um, again, compromise in the corner. I compromise over the door here, so I didn't put a piece across here the same way as I didn't over the opening that's there, just to mirror either side. I had to leave a gap here. There was nothing I could do, even though the gap is narrower here than down here, but the walls aren't running straight. The ceiling and the floor are, <laughs> are meeting each other at that end and separating from each other at this end. So there wasn't much you can do. So again, everything can be a compromise with this type of thing. You can fudge it here and there, but I'm actually quite happy with that now. And when that's all painted and all the gaps are filled with some filler and uh, sealers and stuff, everything is sanded down, you won't notice it and the eye will be taken away from it. So you can see little things like that that you can do. And uh, yeah, that's that room. 
the wind's coating finished in here now so it's paint prep next all the sanding all that stuff but i'll do that it's not really woodwork related so uh we leave that off and I get that done, but we've plenty of projects to do in this room that are woodwork related coming up. So there you go. The room is now done as Wayne's coating is concerned. All right, guys, there we go. That was some DIY Wayne's coating, Wayne's coating, whatever it's called. It's been a hell of a long day and I'm quite tired now. And like I said at the start of the video, I didn't intend to actually make this video because I really wanted to get through that job. But some of you guys on Instagram messaged me and said you were would be really interested in seeing what I was doing there and that some of you guys are actually thinking about doing that in your own houses and you just wanted to see the process that I was doing. So that's what I was doing. It's a hell of a lot cheaper to do it this way. Buy some sheets of uh, moisture proof MDF. It'll last forever on the walls. You can make any style, any shape. That's just a particular style that me and my wife decided to go with. We wanted a nice square kind of modernish look and try and tie it into the old cottage. And again, when that's all painted and all the filling is done, you won't see the gaps or the cracks or anything like that. You can kind of hide it and fudge it up. And uh, yeah, it looks quite nice when it's done. So that's the whiskey room. I'm gonna put this into a playlist now called the whiskey room. So all the projects that are coming up that are involved in doing up that room will be in a playlist. And I'll keep them in a separate playlist. So I'm gonna get a whiskey barrel and make a barrel out of it. I'm gonna make a computer desk, live edge computer desk. I'm gonna make a live edge light fitting, a few different types of lamps to go in that room, and a few other cool woodworking projects will all be coming up in the whiskey room uh, project. And I need to remake all a big whiskey rack as well to go over the live edge desk. So that's gonna be coming up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it guys. Hopefully you've actually got something from this video. Again, I didn't intend to make it, so it's a bit uh, hammered together, forgive me. And uh, I'm quite tired, so I'm gonna get out of here now. So if you're new here, think about subscribing. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're into your whiskey, don't forget that I have a whiskey channel called the whisking shed so come over and join me there i will link it below and i'll actually link it up here now as well so don't forget to come and join me over there too so that's it guys i'm gonna get here now it's time for some dinner <laughs> i'll see you in the next one take it easy